Genesis 3, 6 through 7. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired. That word desired in the Hebrew, shamad, it speaks to coveting, longing for, to feel delight, inordinate affection, ungoverned passion, lust, selfish drive. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, sakal, to turn the mind, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave unto, and gave also unto her husband, where was he? With her. And he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened. In other words, they were made aware. And they knew they were naked. They'd always been physically naked. They were covered, saturated with the glory of God. But now they're stripped of the glory of God. So they saw themselves from a different perspective, an ungodly perspective. And they sold fig leaves together. You all have to pay, to, pay attention and come to class because they, they had not done this kind of stuff before. They sold fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And when the woman saw. This is lesson number one in a new series entitled The Idol, the Idol of Pornography. So before you stone me, and turn a deaf ear or tune me out and say, no, this is inappropriate uh, subject material for the local church. I want you to hear from God's perspective uh, what's happening to us and to our children. Now, we understand this, that God requires obedience. He requires obedience. And so the objective in our first teaching series of the year the objective set forth in this local church to examine every area in our lives for disobedience and dethrone every idol, every habit, every hobby, every thought pattern, every pattern of behavior that opposes God. We must expose this stuff and we must be willing to dethrone every idol, every habit, every hobby, every thought pattern every pattern of behavior that opposes God, the idol of pornography. And the truth is that many refuse to touch this topic within the local church, and yet there are people in our choirs addicted to porn. There are pastors, so-called preachers, in our pulpits addicted to porn. They're greeters and ushers addicted to porn. They're deacons and evangelists addicted to porn. They're professed followers of Christ throughout Christendom addicted to porn. There are people in our audio and our media ministries addicted to porn. There are people in our children's church, yes, and nursery ministries addicted to porn. Our colleagues and our classmates addicted to porn. Pornography is, is, is something that scars the soul, so much so that many people have become severely impacted psychologically by the content of extreme engagement in pornography. This is something that's dangerous. It is Satan's strategy to control the mind, to control our emotions, our passions, our physical, our mental health, our relationships. He burns images in the soul. He has to present explicit sexual immorality 
so as to cripple us in the mind, stimulating and arousing a fire, a burning in the flesh, but it starts with a burning in the mind. And we all must understand today that his strat strategy, his plan, is destroying marriages. In our local church over the years, now, those of you listening, you want a motivational message, you want a feel-good message, you, I'll give you permission to go ahead and leave right now. Yeah. Right. Because we cannot have people in local churches bound to pornography and so many other idols, and yet we keep on moving like God's okay with it. God sends the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, to convict us of sin. It's important that we expose the danger of pornography. Visual images. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start this because many of you already know, know this for sure, that in order to captivate the mind, in order to enslave and to imprison, the, the first thing you do is you want to give your, your first hit, it must be free. And those of you who've already uh, jumped off the bridge into this particular area, you understand that the first time was free. And then if you want to see more, which the flesh does, that, that, that curiosity little beast, curious, wanting to see more, then you have to pay for additional access and subscriptions. Now we're talking about in a range of 15 to 97 billion dollars, the pornographic industry. It's a billion dollar industry on a low end, 15 billion. High end, 90, globally, $97 billion industry. Many violent and misogynistic images become seared into a person's mind who engages in pornographic content. Some are unable to remove, pay attention, remove, rise above, and overcome the intrusive images from their thoughts, days, weeks, months, even years after viewing pornography. Pornographic images shape a person's view of sexual relationships in ways that prove extremely toxic. Over the years, Reverend and I have had several, not one or two, several counseling sessions with married people, and the issue was addiction to pornography. I understand this. I'm going to try to expose as much as I can today. And some of you can study it. Some of you have already talked to physicians. One of the things that happens when, when, when we engage in pornography over the years, it can cause erectile dysfunction. Why? Because we have been in an area wherein it's been so explicit, these visual images and the stimulation and the arousal in the body, and we enter into a path of masturbating, right? And then when we get married, we have difficulty performing sexually because we have spent years and years upon years in porn. Can we talk? The devil does not want us to ever, ever reflect the image of God in the earth, so he gives us an image. Culture is filled with images. And what are we doing adapting to, conforming to all of these different images? Why? Satan does have a plan. He does understand that we were created in the image and the likeness of God. We were created to operate like God. We were created to reflect his character and his nature, but we can't do that because Satan has given us another image. It's burned in our souls. And so what do we see when we're praying? The porn that we looked at. What do we see when we look at another individual? The porn that we engaged in. We cannot even look at each other through eyes of purity because of what has been burned into our souls. God has blessed us with some wonderful abilities. One of the most powerful abilities God has given us all, all things being equal, is the ability to see, to imagine, to see pictures with the mind, to dream with the mind. So if, for instance, I say, I want you to envision a white Corvette, you can see it in your mind, and then I say, take a look, it's a red Corvette. You can see it in your mind. God has given us the organ, the eye, 
to communicate, to send information to the brain. Satan understands how God designed us. It's important, God has said throughout Scripture, it is, it is important that we guard what we see. It is feeding information to the, to the mind. It's, it, you've heard it said, the eye is the window to the soul. You can stop trying to look for that Scripture. That's not a Scripture in the Bible, but the principle, the reality of what is said is true. The eye is one of the most powerful organs in the human body. So, so God is very clear. He wants us to be guarded against visually those things that we see, those things that penetrate the brain. Matthew 6, 22 through 23. We'll look at it in a New Living Translation. Your eye is a lamp that provides light for your body. In other words, your eye is that illumination, that, that lamp that provides insight, direction, illumination for your life. When your eye is healthy, it's, it's how I see. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light, or your whole life, your entire life is filled with light. It is filled with illumination. But when your eye is unhealthy, now, we're not talking about a physical disease of the eye, right? When your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled. Listen, people, pay attention. Your whole body, your whole life is filled with darkness based upon the condition of what we see that filters information on into the brain. And if the light you think you have and if the light you think you have is actually darkness, pay attention how deep that darkness is. Matthew 6, 22 through 23. I want you to hear it in the original King James Version. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, that word there means whole, free from disease, pollution, or corruption. Thy whole body shall be full of light, but if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. And if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. So whatever enters into the mind enters by what we see, right? What we say, what we hear, our, our senses. We're talking about the eye gate. And while all of these, the, the senses that God gives us are important, the pictures in the mind, the images in the mind, listen, the images in the mind control the actions, the attitudes, the appearance, and the words of a person. It's the image in the mind that controls what I do. The pictures in the soul control. So... We're sitting there and we're watching porn, watching porn, watching porn. What's the next thing? If you don't have a partner that you're going to engage in intercourse with, you begin to masturbate. You see, the, the design is there. It is, is, it, and, 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 and let me just say this. You all come to class. Sex is God's idea. Pure sex, undefiled sex, holy sex, the, 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 the act of marriage is God's idea, and that's designed to nurture the union. It's designed for procreation. It's not designed for filth. It's God's idea. So the act of marriage, sexual intercourse between a husband and a wife is clean, is pure, it's holy. There's nothing wrong with it the way God created it. But for some strange reason, Satan convinces us that we can improve upon what God has done. The pictures and the soul control. Sight, we've learned this over the years, sight breathes and it fuels desire. You see, I didn't desire it until I saw it, right? The, the, the fueling of the flesh, the arousal of the flesh, the stimulation of the flesh, that did not occur until I saw it. Now understand this about human anatomy. And some of you, some of you all, this will probably really frighten you if you have young children. The sexual appetite begins to kick in, listen, between ages 9 and 12. That's when that appetite kicks in. You understand this? So it is not a sin for teens to be on fire in their flesh 
because all things being equal, and the hormones are doing what they're supposed to do, they should have a, a sexual appetite that is normal. Are y'all understanding? Yes. You don't want to mismanage that season. And, and, and parents, those of you who walk around as though your children are clueless, you are a foolish person. The best thing we could do so that they're not educated by the culture is to inform our children. When you see changes in their bodies, you talk to them, you educate them, and make sure you educate them from the mind of God. What we focus on feeds us and it fuels us. What we focus on, just imagine, you're focusing on pornography, it is going to feed you and fuel you, but it'll also destroy you. Oh, it ain't, it ain't gonna destroy me, ain't nothing wrong with that. You'll watch a little stuff and then play with yourself, you okay. No, the danger is deeper. That's why Jesus said that if you got any degree of darkness in you, how great is that darkness? Pornography is Satan's playbook. It is a very real addiction and will impose, and I'm going to repeat this over and over, detrimental consequences on one's mental, spiritual, emotional, physical, and relational health. You can get so hooked on it until when it's time for you to perform the way God created you to perform, you're crippled. Pornography's strength is realized in secrecy. It remains strong through idleness. You remember the old people used to tell us, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. That ain't in the Bible, but the principle is true. Proverbs 28, 13. If you want to keep this thing, listen, the stronghold of it, you want to keep it alive and thriving, you got to keep it secret. People who conceal their sins will not prosper. In other words, they cannot live in the favor of God. It ain't talking about no money. It's talking about well-being of life. It's not possible for people who conceal their sins. And pornography finds its strength in secrecy. Nobody runs around bragging on how much porn they watch. Now, people, I want you all to understand something here. Our children have become digital junkies because of the amount of screen time they have. I think that those of us baby boomers, we're fortunate in that we did not have smartphones and tablets and all these computers that these children have now. And, and let me show you how addicted they are. Take it away from them and see the temper tantrums. Look at your child's behavior when you take their phone, you take their computer, you take their tablet. You say, you're grounded, listen, for a month and look at how they behave. They're digital junkies. And right at their fingertips, Satan's going to make sure that they see the very thing that they don't need to see because once you've seen it, you'll never be able to erase it from your mind. This is why I understand the mind is so powerful. And God tells us to protect it and to guard it and to watch what we put before our eyes because once you see it, you won't be able to erase it. We, the mind is a masterpiece. People who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. And my prayer has been, God, you see, I, I, I teach in a way wherein I can understand when a person uh, tunes me out, um, refuses to receive. I understand because there's a refusal to change. And those of us who have been in a professional environment, we have learned that body language speaks. So when a person does this to me, they speak to me. When you turn your back to me, you're speaking to me, right? When you pull your head down, you're speaking to me. When you look at me eyeball to eyeball, you're speaking to me. If I'm in a meeting in a conference room and that meeting, as far as I'm concerned, is over, I stand up. Now, you may not catch the signal, but I'm telling you this is over. We speak through body language and gestures. And so as I'm studying, I'm saying, God, I already know that there will be those who will turn a deaf ear because they don't want to change. So I need you to captivate the human heart. 
And for those who want to change God, I'm praying for strong deliverance. Because everybody doesn't want to be bound by this stuff. But you got hooked, you got trapped because it was free. Or a friend shared it with you. Or you, listen, and, and, and the devil is good at this. You walked up on something filthy. Some years ago, we haven't been back, uh, but some years ago, Reverend and I and uh, Jerry Jr. was a young guy. We went to um, Las Vegas. And we can see why they call it Sin City. I mean, it, for me, every place on the planet is Sin City, as long as the devil is alive, the demons. But I mean, they had boobs everywhere. But everywhere, right? Visual representations of evil everywhere. I mean, just little cards everywhere. A woman with her boobs. I was like, God, what? You know, and he's here, and he's a teenager, and we already know teenage season. Listen, if you got children when they hit teenage season, I don't care how you pray. It's a different season. And you need grace for every season. So we haven't been back there. I don't think, I, I just didn't have a good time when we, we were supposed to be on vacation. But as our son is growing into these teenage years, and he's preached this, I mean, globally he's preached it, so you all already heard his story. Somehow he got into some pornographic site. Now, I'm Old Testament, so I, I'm really antiquated, but my husband was able to track history. So he goes on the computer because he wants to see what is our son looking at. Lo and behold, what did he find? What do you find? Y'all don't be scared. Look, don't look, don't play me this morning now. <laughs> he sees that our son, our teenage son, has been watching porn. So he calls him in to have a little. I was, you know, there are certain uh, situations in our home. My husband governs, so he, he, at certain seasons, when it comes to Jerry Jr he would always make sure that he had private alone time to talk with him and he didn't want me in the room. So he takes him aside and he talks to him, right? So he says, I need you to tell me the truth. <laughs> How many of you know his, his first, first response was what? Lying. It's lying. It's true to his nature. You see, just because you love God and you pray and you fast doesn't mean your child knows God. That was your assumption, an erroneous assumption that your child is born again and your child is a little angel and surely my child won't. Oh, I beg to differ. The human element is alive in every boy and every girl. So Reverend says, I'm going to give you another opportunity to tell me the truth. Did he ever tell you the truth? No, he kept lying. And so then his dad puts the evidence in his face and tracks his history and shows him what he's been watching. That's when he stopped lying. You see, because the strength of this thing is secrecy. But a real man, y'all pay attention, a real man, a godly man, you don't beat him. What you going to beat him for? It's time for us to have a real serious talk about the danger of what you're looking at. Y'all understand it? So as we're going through this, I'm not detached from reality and what happens with parents and grandparents and what happens with our siblings and what even happens with us. Psalm 19, 12 through 13. This is what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to keep lying, you see. Now, you could probably deceive some folk, but you cannot deceive God, right? Right? And understand this is affecting all of us because some single girl, some virgin girl is going to have to marry some joker who has been bound by this stuff. And she's going to have to deal with what's in his psyche. And then there are young males, virgin males. They're going to marry some young girl who has been bound by this stuff. Can y'all take straight talk? And with all of her pornographic activity and all of her vibrators and all of her toys, now this husband cannot satisfy her sexually. Why? Because she's had all these gadgets going on. That's the way the devil wants it. Anything God created, listen, he's coming in as a counterfeiter to destroy the purity. Listen, pornography destroys the purity of the soul. 
who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Learn them, let them not have, pay attention, let them be sins. The secret stuff. Let them not have dominion over me. Now that's where Satan wants us. He wants porn to rule and reign over you. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. That's rebellion against God. Pornographic addiction must be exposed for healing to occur. I cannot be healed as long as I want to hide. So we have the key statement, a point of emphasis, God will not heal what we conceal because Satan traffics in secrecy. Sure he does. God will not, not let the kid, God will not heal what we conceal. Satan traffics in secrecy. God makes it clear, confess your faults, in other words, confess your sins, and you can't do that to the world. You don't need to be doing that to no pope. He ain't nothing he can do. Listen, with all the, the porn the pope's been looking at, <laughs> And all the little boys that have been preyed upon in Catholicism, you need something greater than Catholicism. You need Jesus. Are we good? Now listen, I, this is what I'm going to be on, so you can decide. I ain't coming back to church next Sunday. You can go ahead and make that decision. I'm going to be on this for a while until the Holy Spirit says enough. Ephesians 5, 1 through 11. Imitate God. He's the model. It's not Beyonce or who, who, all these, Drake, and y'all can call the names, the Kardashians, and whoever, Rihanna, whoever, Izzo, Lizzo, whoever. <laughs> Imitate God. I'm not talking to the world. I'm talking to the household of faith. I'm talking to those of us who profess to be followers of Christ, Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example, not of the world, not of a culture, not of Hollywood. Example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. And, and God is asking us to offer up our bodies, offer up our lives as an offering, a sacrifice pleasing to him. Let there be no, how much? No. Let there be no sexual immorality. And that encompasses all this stuff. Whether it's anal sex, oral sex, bestiality. Y'all good? Yeah. No, we ain't good. Ooh, we. No sexual immorality. Not in the household of faith. The world is doing what the world does. They're sinners, right? Impurity or greed among you. Such sins, listen, have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, that's your nasty jokes, your profane jokes. Foolish talk and coarse jokes. These are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. In other words, these kind of folk don't go to heaven. And the Bible is clear, verse 5, you can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. What about his grace? His grace is sufficient for those who turn, those who want to change, not for those who want to continue in. For a greedy person is an idolater. Now, we'll get into idolatry. Why is this, this thing such an idol? Worshiping the things of this world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. Can you see it? Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. But the anger of God will fall on all who disobey who? Him. Well, you know, that's just your pastor. No, this is God. Don't participate in the things these people do. What does he say? Don't participate in the things these people do. For once, once in days past, everybody has a past, 
For once you were full of darkness, but now, but now, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Verse 10, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, here's the deal, expose them. So how do we really get people free? We've got to expose this stuff. Pornography engagement offers unrealistic expectations by a cool master, a satanic master. The promise of pornography is to satisfy the lust of the flesh and, pay attention, of the mind. I didn't see it. I didn't desire it. But once I saw it, I desired it. So, what are your children looking at on these devices? Well, my child ain't got one, but your friend does. Your child's friend does, right? So, they may never have a smartphone or a tablet, but they got buddies, they got homies who do. And most of us, like Eve, we gave it once we took it. You see, she saw it first. Now, God said, don't mess with that. I'm telling you, don't do it. But the devil whispers in her ear, that's why it's important who's counseling us, who's informing us, who's talking to us. Oh, that's just my friend. Watch your friend. This was this man's wife. I, I can tell you some stories. I mean, we've had counseling sessions. You wouldn't believe it. The things that, that go on behind closed doors. Let's go to Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. Some of y'all looking like, uh... Is she almost done? <laughs> That's it. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Who is that? The prince of the power of the air. Who is that? Yeah. yeah. That's the devil. The spirit who now, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. The word there, disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh. Oh, that wasn't me. I ain't mentioned no porn, but you still conducted yourself in the lust of your flesh. It's still lust, right? Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as others. Pornography is everywhere. It's in the movies we watch, it's the videos, it's the mall. You know, when I was growing up, they had, I think they were called, um, they were called adult magazines or, or Playboy magazines or whatever, and they had these little rooms, I don't know if you all remember Blockbuster, we'd go and, and they would have a little section, adult movies. Do you all remember? Yes. Uh, I, don't, I don't want nobody to raise your hand. How many of y'all went in that little room and rent those movies? <laughs> Oh, but look at our times, right? So now you don't have to go into that little room, Mark, adults only, uh, adult videos only. Just flip open your phone. In the restrooms, in a restaurant, in a classroom, right? In your bedroom, in your automobile, just open up your phone. You all know it so. First, it's free. But the industry makes its money off of subscriptions. My brother's dead today. He died of an overdose, or what the world called, they, the streets called it bad crack. But the, the uh, autopsy report said acute toxic cocaine poisoning. His friend introduced him to his first hit of marijuana. And then it escalated from marijuana to crack cocaine. And that's the stuff that killed him. As a young male, never saw his children grow up, his grandchildren never saw them, but a friend, right? Y'all understand? It? it just takes one time. There's a, this hormone that's released, dopamine. It's, as soon as you get involved, you start watching the porn, and uh, you get involved in, you know, this, this, this sexual immorality, and that dopamine kicks in. And, and, and statistics say that it, it has the same effect as when you use drugs. 
there were experiments done. So after mice were given this crack cocaine after the first hit, they kept going back for more and more and more until it killed them. Sins like that. We keep going back for more and more until it kills us. And you see, you don't have to experience physical death to be dead. That's unproductive. We, we'll talk more about it. I'm, I'm almost done. I, I, I need to preach all the way through 12 o'clock today. <laughs> no. this, this pornography, it's, it, it, it is ever luring, it is baiting, it is a predator seeking to enslave and devour. Now, I want you all to pray for me because this is where I am. I must address this dangerous and very serious issue. It is plaguing too many of our children, our youth, our young adults, and sadly, pay attention, many of our adults. Because in our counseling sessions, these were not young people, these were old folk. Most young people today are exposed to pornography in elementary school. So whether, listen, the goal is to attract the lives of consumers and suppliers. And I stated this, the porn industry makes its money through automatically reoccurring contracts and subscriptions. Every month, pay attention, customers pay a predetermined amount of money in exchange for access to pornographic content. It is designed to pollute the soul. Satan, he erects, we're, we're, we're talking about Babylon and idolatry and all of these images. So what Satan does is he erects an image in the mind. He does it through the organ, the eye, these visual representations we see in pornography. Free porn. Y'all all right? So um, I have to close. I was just setting the teaching up today and Reverend saying your time is up. You may not need this because you're not guilty. It's amazing that you don't know what's in your future. And then we don't know who we're going to have to minister to. But this is my prayer. My prayer is that we'll be able to save a generation of young people from this filth. Right? You all can't be like, my mom was like, hush, hush, don't talk about nothing, don't talk about it, don't talk about it, don't got to talk to you young people. Got to tell them the truth, right? And then like Reverend, you need to be tracking what they're watching. You ain't that busy. And if you're so busy that you can't track what a child is, is watching, you don't need to be a parent. Because when we're parenting, right? When we're parenting, I want to know where you're going. I want to know who you're with. I want to know what you're watching, right? Because I'm either going to help you soar in life or I'll have to bury you one day. It's important to me what's in my child. Are y'all understanding? And so we need some deliverance from some digital junkies. Right? <laughs> you, got, you got junkies all. I ain't on no dope, but you're a junkie. Because you're addicted to You can't make it a day without. You better not, listen, leave home without your cell phone. You go crazy. Can we get some people healed? You all, most of our people who work up close with me already know me. I understand that shaming and bashing doesn't bring change or deliverance. That's not what I'm about. I'm about exposing. But I also believe in divine deliverance. And I know God can deliver you from any addiction if you want to be delivered. If I could give us a real deep revelation, sexual intercourse and all these orgasms, that ain't greater than the power of God. There's a God who's great enough to heal us, right? But first, let's expose it. Let's put it out there, no secrets, right? And then when we lift up hands, it's gonna be holy hands show enough. Because I know what I've been doing with these hands, right? And you'll be able to get rid of all your toys, right? And it's just Jesus because we want to give God glory in our bodies. Amen. Please stand to your feet.
Everybody say, let's talk about it. Right. We're going to talk about it from the Word of God, right? And then those of you who are spiritually strong, this is what the Bible says, those of you who are strong, when a brother or sister is overtaken in a fault, you restore that person in the spirit of meekness considering yourself, right? So we're all about restoring, considering ourselves, because I don't know what's in my future. God Almighty, deliver us. I believe you got to do it. The very thing that Satan does not want us to talk about, God, we expose it. You told us, uh, expose the unfruitful works of darkness. You told us to dethrone, to tear down every idol. And God, there's a reason. And now I'm trusting that you work along with us and confirm your word with signs and wonders following. I'm believing you, God, for deliverance. For those, God, just free, one time, the sight that penetrated the soul. God, I'm believing you for deliverance. For that young girl, that young woman, that young boy, that young man, that you would bring healing. I pray for the intervention of the Holy Spirit. Change us so that, God, we love you with all our hearts our minds, our souls, our strength. God, with totality of being, we love you. We love you so much that we'll guard what we put before our eyes. Give us purity of soul. God, I pray that those who are hearing the message, whether streaming in or, or via some form of technology or in person, I pray, God, that the people will catch the heart of the message. No shaming, no berating, no tearing down, but yes, correcting behavior. Correcting, oh God, our engagement. Forgive us. Forgive those of us as parents who've been negligent, Lord, and we've been so busy. Unmanaged time that we have not watched our children, we've not raised our children, we've not prayed with our children, we've not talked to them, we've not explained to them. Forgive us for our negligence as parents. For that young girl, Father, who feels dirty and lost and ashamed, remind her, oh God, as we teach the word who she really is. And as she comes to know her identity in you, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you'll be the woman you created her to be. That young male, Father, who feels like he, he, he's not going to be able to perform ever as a husband. He's been so bound, so addicted for years. Heal him in his soul, oh God. Oh, God, heal. So that once again, God, we can give you glory. Save our children, save our marriages. Oh, God, save the household of faith. And may we press in, oh God, until you reveal all that you want us to see in this subject so that we live sexually pure lives. I ask that you save every sinner, restore the backslidden. And those of us who've been complaining and murmuring, we've, we've grown cold, shake us at our core and remind us, oh God, that there's still work to do as long as we're breathing. God, blanket us with your Shekinah glory. Use our lead pastor in a mighty way. Oh God, save the young people as they come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We'll be careful, oh God, to give your name the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.